We start off, and we start off with what we call pat and go. Uh, pat, pat and go. Okay, and basically what pat and go is is throwing versus air. So we'll have a quarterback or a coach on one side, the four kids on the other, a quarterback or a coach on the other side, four kids on the other, and we just do routes. Start off with our hitch route, our slam route, whatever, you know, our basic routes. And that's just kind of a warm up, pat, pat and go, or some people call it routes on there. Um, but that's just kind of the warm up to start, why the kids are coming in, you know, not chucking balls in, you know, it's an organized activity. Then from pat and go, um, we're going to do a dynamic warm up. Okay, and so, worked out, warm up. Um, a dynamic warm up. And, you know, nowadays people don't, um, nobody stretches anymore. So it's all about dynamic warm up, it's active movement. So, um, you know, it's, uh, well, and I set up cones for this because I, I want them to know where to run to. It's usually about 20 yards, 30 yards, whatever you want. Um, and I'll say, okay, uh, let's get nice, uh, about 50% to the other, uh, to the other side and back. So they'll go and, and they'll come back. And then when they come back, okay, we got high knees, you know, and we'll, um, you guys can Google or whatever. There's tons of dynamic, you know, uh, I like to do Frankenstein's every step. And then if they get good, you turn it into a skip. Um, anything, you know, old school karaoke and all that kind of stuff, you know. All activating, I want to activate their hips, their knees, and their ankles. I want to get them loose. Instead of doing the old, you know, this kind of stuff. The stuff probably we did when we were kids. So, dynamic warm-up. Next, we're going to go what we call walk-through. Um, at least in high school. And what I'm going to do there is we're going to practice our plays. Practice plays at, um, with some tempo. So that means getting in the huddle, or if you just call out my scrimmage, running the play versus air, and going kind of fast. So put guys, okay, so you run, you know, whatever, sweep right. Okay, then, hey, you go to center, you go to quarterback, you go to the uh, running back, run the same play. So we're going to go through our plays in our walkthrough right there. So they start thinking about, it. you want the memory to come back of, of, of what you're running, okay? Um, to try to develop some muscle memory, try to develop that muscle memory with these kids. So, and then uh, obviously the, the mental part of it. I'll get into, after I do the practice plan, I'll get into how, you know, we set up our offensive defense at, at that level, what, what I think is successful. So, we're going to practice our plays right there, because what we want, you know, just like at any level, you want your guys feeling confident running the plays you're supposed to run, so they're not there. The worst thing, especially for the, uh, for young guys, is what I saw, what I thought we were, had the advantage on other teams is they just, they weren't organized. We'd come out and we would line up so fast and run plays and the other team would be trying to get set. And at these levels where they're very inexperienced, we would just mop teams. They'd be like, you know, we'd be up by three touchdowns before they could figure out what was happening. Just because our kids were just ready to play faster and they were set up. You guys ever heard that expression? They say this on defense all the time, alignment and assignment. So if you line up right and you know your assignment, you're probably going to play better. So with little kids, just get them to line up and know what some basic things are supposed to do. So we'll do going to do a walkthrough, okay? And then we're going to go. We're going to work on um, what I would call a group group skills period, okay? And so this is probably the most important period, right? Here, I think. We're going to work on skills in that period, okay? And that there's, let's see if, and I bring my voice here just so you know, like they're little kids so they can remember something. Like, what are the two, Marcus, what are the two most important things in a flight football game? That, your name's not Marcus, but try. defense and Okay, well, what on defense? Uh, don't let them score. No. <laughs> Eli? Yeah, pull flags. Two things, pull flags. And don't drop the ball. 
That's it. In, in this little game, FNL, you can win doing those two things. Because the center, snap exchange, handing off, because the, they drop the ball, it's dead, you waste it down. And teams do it over and over and over. They just can't handle the ball. And then, we've all played five football, it's hard to pull flags. It's so much harder than you think. So we, constant, we do drills and we practice flag pulling 70% of the time. I can think of the games we lost, it was because the guy ran and three guys missed the flag. It wasn't because it was a guy wide open, you know, we blew a coverage or something, you know, you know whatever. It's because we couldn't pull his flag. That's as simple as that. So, and I'll get right after this, um, I'm going to finish here with our practice plan. Shh. Uh, after the skills period, um, we're going to go um, team, a team period, okay? A team period. This period? Let's see if I can get better. Um, team period. Now, most coaches, they're all bad. It's like at my office. We got better ones? A team period. Don't make the mistake of trying to scrimmage every, every day. Like, do you think that's the most important thing? The kids are going to want to scrimmage all the time. Okay? So, I, we did less of this than anything right here. Okay? Um, so, we go team period, and if you're not scrimmaging against another period or another team, we would just work, go four on four, but you work your same plays. You're doing the same things, you just don't have everyone going at the same time. Okay? So, you make that competitive. And uh, you, you know, you scrimmage each other basically. It's a team period. And then the key is within these two periods is that you're giving <coughs> everybody at different spots. I just had a mom today say, you know, um, we put this guy as a coach. We wanted him to be on his team, but as I think about it, I don't know if it's a good fit because all the players are set in positions, and he just does one thing. And I, I go well. Um, on offense, they're all kind of the same thing. You're all receivers, really. So I didn't really get what she was saying, but uh, I'd have to talk to the coach about it. But the fact is, you should have everybody being able to play everything. Okay? That's really important. Um, and, you know, snapping the ball is not like the, the worst position. You touch the ball, you snap it, and then you go out for a pass. It's not like you have to permanently block. It's like the ball. So everyone's eligible. So, you know, a lot of times it's like, uh, when we were going up, you know, the guy snapping that block, you know, it's no fun. This guy gets to go out and do routes. So that's, that's the advantage of uh, our league. So we'll go team period. And then at the end, um, Marcus, yes. go, go to the front desk and see if they have any more pins that are good. Just say, okay. say we're in the FNL game and my dad wants to know if there's any better pins. Uh, we're going to do something competitive at the end. Okay, because I always want to do something competitive. That could be a race, that could be a flag pulling, pulling contest. Uh, you know, you guys get creative with that. But I want to, I want them to, uh, I want to foster some competitiveness within our team. Okay? All right, so any questions on this so far? Feel good about that? Let's talk about the group skills period. Um, probably my favorite drill and very, Guys, uh, I hope I don't bore you. It's very, very simple. Everything I say is simple. So, and, but I think that's what you need to be simple. Um, it's not rocket science. For like my favorite drill is you have a sideline right here because I um, can't really see the sideline. Try another thing. Um, I have a sideline here, okay. And then what I'm going to do is have if you if you're able to have an assistant coach, have him here. Okay, with about, um, you know, four players, however many you want. Then I'm going to have a center here, a quarterback, and then a receiver, or running back, whatever. Uh, I'm going to set up cones right here. Okay, and then the coach is going to send in a defender. Okay, just like that. So right there, you got four guys in this drill. So you're, you know, my, my thing with coaching like at the high school level, any level, I hate guys standing around. Hot chase, chase one of our ex-players. 
That's kind of going to USD. He's going to play football there. This guy's a stud. Okay. So Chase knows. I want that practice moving fast. All right. We have a big clock out. Our periods are never longer than 15 minutes or 10 minutes uh, because I want this stuff, you know, you want, you want stuff to happen. Okay. You don't want little kids bored and, and with their attention spans, uh, man, you got to keep it, you got to keep it moving. Okay. So what we're going to do on this drill, okay, for one, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coach up the corner uh, because the corner is going to use the sideline as his friend. That's his ally. And so we're going to teach that corner. If this is the sideline, we're going to teach him, I'll teach him an outside leverage to, keep, to, to push everything inside. From the start, we want to push everything inside. Why? We never want the ball outside our corner. Three deep zone, you never want to be deep. So we want to, I'm going to angle him seven yards or so, pushing inside. Okay, and we, I did this with kindergartners, first, second grade, third, fourth. I've never coached anything higher. Okay, so that's what we're going to coach there. Now here, we're going to do a center quarterback. Uh, what we're going to do is what I call our fly sweep. And we're going to hand the ball off and they're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Um, now, to, with, with this, this is what we base the offense on, is, what, um, in this case, um, this would be Liz Fly. Okay, so, Eli, did he take the ball? Oh, you got it? Okay, you go over there, Eli. Okay, so, this is what our offense is just set up. The, the, the call is, uh, and we don't have what I just do it from the line, Liz Fly, Eli. So, I'll go over the formation that we're already going to be in. And then all I do is call this fly. That means coming from the left. That's our fly motion. And then I call the kid's name. That's how we, are. we did the whole offense. So then that's where it starts. We're going to start with this sweep fast. Okay? So this fly. So you teach the quarterback down. And then the quarterback lifts his foot. Set up. Boom. Guy takes off. Okay? So that's this fly, Eli. That's Eli's name. So go ahead and sit down, Eli. So then. This fly, Eli, and then we got to go one on one. Okay? So, what, and then I'm going to rotate guys through. So, what, what, what's great about this drill, you got a guy carrying the ball, you're going to teach fundamentals, you're going to teach the left elbow up. You don't want, because if you, if you do this, if they're grabbing, they're going to fumble it. So, uh, that's why I like FNL2 or like coaching it, because it's, you teach them fundamentals. Okay? Um, does there, anyone know the four points of pressure? Okay, so I teach the four points of pressure from the start. So Eli, see if you can show them. Okay, is the ball too big? Yeah, palm, forearm, bicep, chest. Okay, so a little big for this little guy. But so that's from day one. So we'll go palm, forearm, bicep, chest. Four points of pressure, and, and all our kids are going to learn four points of pressure. So when they're running, they got it high and tight. We're going to say high and tight. Okay. Oh, good job, Marcus. So. And just put them right there. So they're going to get four, four points of pressure. They're going to hand the ball off with their left elbow up. And then they're going to run, and they're not going to have the ball out of here because they're going to drop it or it's going to get knocked down. Once it gets knocked down, it's dead. Okay? Um, this is tricky. And this is from the T, too. This is from the T, uh, meaning from the center. Okay? This is not shotgun. You guys can do shotgun if you want. We didn't do as much just because I was a little worried about that exchange. But but as you get older, is anybody going uh, doing five and six, seven eight? It's like everybody there's all shotgun. Okay, but you do whatever you want. I just uh, you know that's a, a it's a little tricky with that. So you know literally I, Eli I think quarterback he gets down there it's real cute he gets down there those little kids they get down there to take that snap it's not you know they they don't do the you know, like I would teach a high school guy, hey, I just want them down there to try to get that snap. All right? So we got a quarterback, a uh, center quarterback exchange. We got a handoff. We got one of our plays, and then we're working flag pulling, and then we're working a defensive deal as well right there. So we will do that both sides the other way as well. And then, um, you know, obviously we're rotating. Everyone's doing this. Everyone's doing this. Everyone's doing this. Everyone's doing this. So that way everybody's doing the same thing. Anybody on our team can play center. Anyone really can play quarterback. We really only use about two guys, but 
because of your rotation, you got to teach more than one guy to be able to do the quarterback. I had a little guy that couldn't do anything. Anything. He was really, really bad. Really bad. I just taught him to be able to hand the ball off to people. Uh, he stayed involved. He literally would, when he ran it, he'd run the other way a lot of times. Yeah, so, you know, we got him going forward eventually, you know. Uh, but so we were able to teach him, you know, some basic things to keep him involved. For sure. Now, um, and we get a little, we get better at that. This is the next step is we'll put a backer here. And so we'll go a two on one. And then it's all about leverage. So we're going to make sure that he is coming this way, you know, forcing. So he doesn't give up his inside. He doesn't give up that cutback. And then he's forcing it into the pursuit. Okay, so we're gonna kind of squeeze them. So that's yeah, how two people on defense. Mm -hmm. Two against one. Yeah, especially if you get a couple of ball carriers that are real shifty. You know, uh, I, I, I'd like to do that. Um, how wide the sideline eleven comes? I'd say this is about ten yards. And you want everything to be inside the outside inside the cones. Yeah. Line, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like. It. I, you know, that's how I talk about it. You know, uh, sideline is your friend, so your butt's to the sideline, force everything in. Now, would they run inside and have that guy run around them? <laughs> yes. You know, but the more, you know, and then another thing we, we teach shuffle up, shuffle up, you know, little techniques to help them so they didn't just run in there. But if you could get some guys to be kind of disciplined, it's just going to help because it's going to turn in, they'll turn into all their friends. Okay. So are you telling the ball carrier he can't go inside the cones? Ball carrier's got the sideline and the cones to make his moves. That's it. And that's about 10 yards? Yeah, 8 to 10, I'd say, for sure. Okay, so that's, uh, that's kind of bread and butter. I mean, literally do that every week, you know, in, in that skill period, okay? And like I said, work the other side, work your other corner. Um, I think another mm -hmm. one that I, I thought was um, pretty good, was, and, and this is pretty elementary too. Okay, we have some uh, ball carriers here. And then we have some defenders here. Okay, and uh, you have the coach here, and he gives this guy the ball. Uh, we give this guy a little bit of a jump, but we're going straight ahead. It's just a straight, uh, it's just a straight race, and then because he's got a little jump, what does he have to do to get to him? He has to take the right angle because these guys never take a shoot. It's pro football, they don't take a shoot. So, um, so this is what we taught is, I, and it's twofold. And my little guy is, um, I think he does such a good job at this is he takes an angle and then I can't tell you how many tackles or how many flagpoles I've seen <coughs> at the four yard line, at the two yard line. So mentally, we have all these guys taking angles to try to get there. It teaches them angles. And the second thing, the most important thing, is it teaches them great effort. Like the play is never over. You know, and like we would get excited when they make that saving flag pull. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because, and if you could get six guys to do that, you got something going. You know? So I want that I want the, uh, this angle drill to go. And then for these guys too, you know, it's about, hey, you know, straight ahead, not dancing. You know, the thing like we'll coach up there is we're going to go high and tight. You know, if it's a left sideline, don't go straight at that sideline. You're going vertical. You're not thinking about cutting back. You're going. So, like, when you hit open field, you're not looking back. It's straight to the goal line. So, that's kind of the coaching point there. That's a little bit more elementary, but this is harder than you think. And sometimes you, you got to set this up because you don't want this guy blazing and this guy never get here. So, you know, we'll, we'll give this guy a little head start when you get to know the, your, your kid's speed. I do races every day. I want to, you know, one, I want to be competitive running, and two, I want to, you know, who can run. Because you might have guys that don't handle the ball really well and can't catch, can't throw, but man, they run fast. You know, handle the ball, try to get it. Okay? Um, so, what, and I gave you two examples of some skill, skills. A afterwards, if you want more, we can go over more. Um, but I think that's a good start. You know, you want to 
have the organization, have a period where you're working on skills. And then as the weeks go and you say, okay, we didn't do this very well, well, think in your head, just come up with some drills, sorry, um, that can get everyone involved to help you get better at whatever you guys struggle with. Okay? Um, now, if we'll put together the offense, you know, I, I would, I started with one formation. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Uh, and we call it 21. Uh, two, two to one side. 21. Or you can say two to one. You know, uh, 21 personnel is like a high school or a uh, term for formation, like I formation. People call that 21. Two back, one right. So it was just easier to remember. 21. You could call it Rhino. I don't care. What, whatever you want. Okay. And that way, we, we, we were in this formation like 95% of the time. That way they all line up at this. And what happens is, I'll say, 21, 21. They all line up, oh, someone's there, oh, they, they know where to go, so they just go to spots. Or I'll just say, hey, uh, Mike, uh, you got running back. So then everyone else goes to the other spots. That's what I'm saying, it's important to make sure everybody can do the same thing. 21, 21, get on the ball, 21. And then, um, then we go. So, Marcus, lead the Z, Eli, you the S. We're going this way. So, we'll come out the line of scrimmage, get over there, 21, 21, rip fly Marcus. Down, let's go, boom, he's going, okay? And then Rip Flight, it's a stat fast. I think when Marcus, your first year, you guys had, was it cartoons or something? With Superhero. Which, superhero, yeah, they had Spider-Man, you know, whatever their superhero is, the kid coach gave them for their plays. So, get back up, guys, we're still going, here we go. Okay, so, 21. Uh, here we go. Rip fly Marcus. Uh, uh, I, I'd say like this. Rip fly Marcus, reverse Eli. Rip fly Marcus, reverse Eli. So go. Boom. He's going. I tell you what, Lil, the, the, the reverses, they kill everybody. <laughs> okay. But, you know, we're going to set it up. We're going to keep running. If they, don't, if they can't stop our fly sweep, we'll just keep running. Keep going. Now, the key is, I said this the other night, what do these guys do? What do they do? When they don't have the ball, you know I told them vertical. Everybody go streak. Just go straight ahead. That way you don't have to teach them anything, and that way they're getting out of the way hopefully. And okay, so this one, I would tell go the opposite of the way the play is going. So that one, you, the guy's got to paint a little bit. So if it's rip fly, we want him to go up that sideline. Okay. So then uh, rip fly. Uh, Rip fly Eli, fake reverse. Rip fly Eli, fake reverse. So go, boom, fake, he's gone. And then so, and then little, uh, you know, coaching points. I'm gonna teach them to go like this and put it in their head. You know, little stuff like that. Um, now, I don't know how you do it. We struggle with this. All reverses. We have the rule. They always, if you're getting the reverse, you're always on the outside. Always on the outside. Okay? What do kids do? If I'm reversing Eli, what happens? They go boom and they run into each other. There's all there's a collision. That's still where friend got black. Yeah, this guy got black eye. Because he ran into the other guy. He's like, they get flustered. Yeah. Luke always Luke, Luke was bad at it. Yeah. So <laughs> if you say if you're always on the outside, Get in the reverse, or you're always on top. That's your rule. I'm not, you know, we, we could still mess it up, but um, that helped us. Okay? So, whoever's getting the reverse is always on top. Whoever's, if you're faking, he's still on top. He comes underneath, and they end up doing this, and then what happens? The ball's on the ground. You got problems. And that exchange, you guys remember this drill you did when you guys were in Pop Warner or whatever? The little handoff drill? Walk toward me, right elbow up. Boom. Then he, he does it back. You guys ever do that? Yeah. I mean, we do that too, just to try to get that. Um, did they always have the right elbow up? No. Try to, you know. Because I'm telling you, if they go to grab it, they're going to drop it. Because if he goes to grab it and it, 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 he tosses it, or instead of putting it in there, bad things are going to happen. Okay? So, that is the base of the offense that we just would kill people. On. So, okay, then you add, so we wouldn't add anything really to it for a while. 
But I had in my mind what we were going to build off it. You just want to build the little blocks, okay? What happens is you guys don't want to go in there gun-ho and have all these plays and you can't, you can't hand them all off, okay? So we got really good at this stuff. I found a couple guys that could run. You go fly sweep, boom, they're taking on, right? So defense is always, they're always going to, you know, they're always going to figure things out. And so they're going to have a plan to stop you. So our next thing we like to do, really simple, is, um, you know, uh, and we, we, we personnel it pretty good. Um, you know, like we had one guy could throw it pretty far. Okay, so I had let's see, Marcus was here, and his name was Josh was here, and then Camden was here. Okay, so we'd say rip fly, um, pass to Camden. <laughs> you know, it's not like it tells us tell what it is. Rip fly, uh, pass to Camden. <laughs> That's what we'd say. And so what would happen is this fast guy. Josh, he get the rip fly. Everybody would come up. Backer, corner, come up, and then we throw him a touchdown. Easy. So it says, you know, he's taking it. Boom. Oh, there he is. Throw it to him. And I'm in the back going, you know, I'm staring at the fly like he's getting it, and then so they come up and they come. He, he throws it. Okay. So that was uh, uh, one of our quick, uh, quick ways to combat guys coming up. Okay, uh, rip fly. Uh, I think that's. I think that's what we call it. Something like that. You can come up with anything you want. Rip fly pass. Rip fly pass. Rip fly throw. Rip fly, you know, whatever. You come up with whatever you want. Um, our our little stack play. You know, these guys. It, it's amazing. I didn't coach this team this year. They run it. Every game, over and over, and teams don't stop it. It's, is it right flood? What, what, we call it right flood. Oh my gosh, it's, it's like kids just can't line up right. Um, so it's just one, two, three, four, five, I guess there's six, just like that. Yeah. Okay, and all it is is uh, streak, 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 flat. He rolls out, he throws to him. You got, you got natural picks happening because you're going vertical. Guys get caught up in there. It's a four-yard throw. Marcus rolls out and goes like this. And they did it over and over. And Now, this guy's a fast guy, okay? So guys are running trenches. I can't tell you how many times he goes like this. Touchdown. Last year, over and over. So right foot. That's so a right foot. Left foot. you have a question here? Remember when Jake did that? I do. No, do that with Jake. Yeah, Jake was the guy yeah, on the your team. Guy in the center, he would go over there, like and, then, the and then the center would go over there. Okay, so the next thing off this, we say right flood throwback. Oh. Okay, and all that is, he sprints out. This guy now, vertical, vertical, vertical. He does this. This guy goes 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. And he goes about literally four yards and he just sits there and he throws back to him. Wide open. Every time. Roll out. Oh. Throw back to him. Not a far throw. Just, you know. So we call, we call it flood throw back. Easy. Easy. Um, the best team I saw, uh, I think it was like 5 6 division. Uh, they threw pretty much on every down, and they based their offense, because I watched them for a couple weeks, on kind of a same concept, center, um, no, they're in shotgun, shotgun, okay, they go like this, okay, so is that six guys, yeah, so they would go, a couple things, this is what it was based on, this, quick out, streak, quick out, okay, so that's what it's based on. And they threw this over and over and over. It's a five yard. The quarterback was good at it. And so they must practice it all the time in the quarterback is efficient. He'd go, yeah. Boom. And he'd throw these little bullets five yards out. Okay? Guy would catch it and try and get his flag. He might not score, but okay. Then they do this. They put trips onto it. Three, four, five, six, yep. And then they would just do the same thing. 
Out. Catch it. Five yard out. Boom. March right down the field. Both sides going. Then, they would just motion them. Same thing. So then you got a guy chasing them. He's out leveraged. Throw the out. Over and over. And guys, I watch them every week. The quarterback never missed. It was really accurate. It's not a hard throw. Five yard eight without low velocity. All the time. Okay, so you say, all right, all right. The corner would start to squat. And two things would happen. He would catch it and then get its flagpole. Or he would get it deflected. Or I saw a guy pick it. Same team. But coach isn't, he's not done. So he says, okay, you want to squat? Motion. And then they throw it to that guy right there in the hole. It's like a two deep concept. That's what we do against two deep zone. So you have squat corner. Um, and this guy, uh, uh, you know, you have a safety here, okay? So uh, it depends on what this guy, safety, now the safety is not going to get to this, all right? But if they, what they would do is they'll put a little safety on top, and then you, then you got to figure out what this guy's doing. If he would jump this, then they would hit this one inside of him. So, uh, and I watched the progression, because I pay attention, uh, of what they were doing. Teams got smart, they would just squat that corner, we're not gonna let you throw out against us. And then that receiver would do a little outside release, and they do a little throw in the hole. Okay, I thought real efficient, real smart, uh, and, and, and kind of basic, you know, streaks and outs. It's almost like that flood concept I showed you with the little guys. Uh, you, you get guys going vertical, and then you throw a pick out. Yes. Coach Mack, how much how much throwing is going on in the kindergarten age group? Zero. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's hard to throw. Yeah, I mean that's what coaches good. make mistakes of trying to throw all the time. Yeah. You know, he was on uh yeah, I mean I coached your kindergarten team, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, we didn't throw much. If you're throwing, it's this is what uh, our big pass was. Uh Eli, get over. Okay? Ball's over there, and we're going this way, Eli. What foot's up? In your stance. Wrong. Yeah, left foot's up. And we're going to teach him stance as a receiver. Left foot up, chest, uh, nose over your toes. Trying to get off the ball right. Okay, so with the little guys, first, second grade, and any time, and what was great is Marcus, they got really good at it when he was first, second grade, is you have corners that are off, or they're off like, you know, you watch a little kid not paying attention. <laughs> and you go like, we hey. And he started to do it. I didn't have to do it. You go like this, him and his friends be like, and that means smoke. So, boom. And you go. That was our kindergarten throw all the time. Um, here. So, and then when you guys see it on the sideline, you say, hey, Johnny, Johnny, smoke, smoke, smoke. When, when those corners are off, and that just means whatever play's called, the quarterback and the receiver knows. Boom, throw. Who, uh, who in the NFL was, uh, they threw smoke to him the most? They may know. He's out of football right now, wishes he could be back in. Uh, was always in the headlines for everything. Yeah. Uh, T.O. Terrell, uh, Terrell, you know, uh, uh, T.O. They throw smoke to T.O. all the time. Why? Because they'd be off him, guy's physical, catch a hitch, you know, Randy Moss, a good, a good smoke guy. Um, We could go through our signs. You know, I taught these guys signs, so that way we could throw something when we wanted. Okay, so let's see if these guys remember. We know what this is, right? What's this? Slant. Slant. So, you know, go two, two, two. Uh, what? <laughs> Eli, like, what's this? Hitch. Hitch. Okay. Um, what's hitch and go? Oh, two. Two. Hitch and go. Uh, this year, their team, they were in the three, four. They ran hitch and go or smoke and go and they burn teams. Oh my gosh, it was beautiful. Go. So, um, and he can't throw super far, but his, his range was about 20, 20 yards, maybe 15, 20 yards. And as long as you don't wait, you know, they get it out with some timing, they can, they can do it. I was surprised how much they could throw the uh, hitch and go. Okay, so we got hitch and go, and then if they come up and you got a fast guy, you know, we're going to do this. What's this guy? Yeah, fade or streak. We're gonna go like this. Hey, we're, gonna go, we're gonna go up top on you. So we tell them the little um, little signals of the pass game. Um, catching the ball. 
fundamental stand up artist. We're going to work hard, and this might be something doing pat and go. Um, sometimes, okay, if we're, we're a group skills period, I felt like uh, we got to work on catching the ball better. Um, the fundamentals of catching the ball, of course, is what? What do we call this? The diamond, right? Throw the markers, diamond. Okay, then when you catch it, what are you supposed to do with it? Put it away with your eyes. So, you know, we're going to work on this all the time as one. Catch it. Okay, all the, I don't need you to intercept it. Go hot dog. Okay, so you're putting it away. Uh, and then we're going to model. You know, we're going to model it all the time. Um, and then you do, we would do drills where, and this is a simple one, you have a coach, and then you have the players on the line. Okay, and you're 10 yards apart, and there's three things I like to do, and we do it with our high school guys too. The first one are high balls. So, and they go in, you pat the ball, boom, and they have to reach up and sky for the ball. And I always coach it where, hey, it's like you're going for a rebound. Okay, you reach up, put it away, boom, at the highest point. So we got high balls, they'll all go through, and then I'll come over here. We'll do one more round of high balls, pat, they come, okay? Then the next one are low balls, and the quarterback, you're gonna throw it below the knee. So if it's below the knee, where should your tips be, guys? Uh, up or down? Yeah. Down. So we want low ones tips down, high ones tips up. Okay, so he's going to pat it, come at me, and he's going to come at me and catch it, catch it low, and put it away. So we're going to go low balls, and then we're going to go challenge. Challenge is I'm going to throw it pretty hard, low velocity at their face. You know, pat it, come at me, come at me, you know. Ah, oh, man. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we call challenge for catching those skills. Um, okay, so before I go on to the basic defense, uh, any questions on some offensive stuff? You guys got a nail? Yeah. What can you get ideas for just fundamentals? There's probably a bunch of kids in our team that haven't even played before. Um, okay, so you would, you know, you'd want to break down what fundamentals you'd want to learn. Uh, what you want to teach, like I think fundamentals of, of catching, right? And then fundamentals of throwing, you know, whoever, you, you know, uh, we talk about today in our camp, is like ball up next to your ear, um, high release. So, is there a good online resource to... I don't know, I don't know. I know there's online stuff for plays, and often some people have said they've done online and get stuff. I don't know if I'm going to um, I guess if you, had, if you had something you were struggling with, you'd call me up and I'll give you some ideas. I don't know. I think you make some stuff up that you think could help. <laughs> um, defensively, are we good? Offensively? If you want to come back to it, we can. Uh, we... Okay, so quarterback, center, if we've we got the same formation. We always had, remember, a corner, outside shade, okay? Um, I would have, sorry, a rusher, a backer, and then probably some sort of guy, uh, a, like a, a rover type guy, okay? So, and everyone does it different, you know, um, it's, it, it gets kind of interesting how creative people can get. I said last night, I want this to be the fastest guy who will not quit. Because with the guy rushing, it's going to create havoc for everybody. Okay? So he's going to be seven yards off. He's going, these guys are going to, I'm going to teach them. We're going we're gonna to play zone. Okay? Um, and I'll tell you that when we would play zone, when we wouldn't. Um, but for the most part, we played zone, and we wanted them to be uh, head up to inside, whichever the uh, receiver was. And then if there was no receiver, we're going to split the difference here. So he's head up to inside of him, uh, and he's splitting. Here's my rusher. And then with him, if there was a receiver on that side, I'd probably put him over there. Now, you could put him tighter, too. If I knew a team couldn't throw, I'm going to put this guy somewhere close. Okay. The worst thing you can do is, is get out leveraged. 
when they, in some formation, you know, you end up with one guy and that's your real guy that's slow uh, and you're worried, you know, say um, if you lined up in this and for whatever reason, you know, you had your guy here. Well, you know, you're going to, you got some problems right here. So uh, quick toss here, you're going to expect this guy to come and make the tackle. Maybe he's not fast enough on the tackle, pull the flag and, uh, you know, he could be in a bad spot. That's why I was saying, you know, alignment. I wanted them to be kind of balanced and uh, try to cover gaps, okay? Yes? So, if the fastest guy is a rusher, what do you do with a kid that's just not keeping up? I'm gonna put them right in here. Okay. okay, because they're gonna be close to the ball. They're not gonna be in space. You don't want them in space, right? You're gonna put them kind of where the action is. I've had guys on our team that did not pull a flag the whole season. So they struggled, right? But, you know, if they're always on the field, you just gotta make sure you got some help behind you. Or maybe they pulled one. Or your own team, I've seen that. The guys pulled our own team. So then, then okay, so then what we do is, um, if they were started to dink us a little bit, if they are able to do that, we would quickly, um, Right before the ball snap, we jump up. We jump up, and then he would be locked in here. He'd be locked in there, and we jump up on him. Okay. Now, what that does makes that quarterback have to throw a really accurate ball, and at these levels, it's really hard to do. The key is um, now. I I taught. Do you remember what I would teach you if you're a defender? Well, hand on the hip. <laughs> and I, I don't know if uh, um, the guys never, uh, we never get called on or anything, but you know, you don't want to be mugging the guy, but what, we're going to go this way, like this. what do I mean? You're the defender, going that way. Okay. okay, so hand on the hip, boom, I shake, okay, I want to get that hand on that hip, okay, boom, here, left hand on the hip, all right, and that's how I taught man to man, okay. Um, and what that was, I, I thought it was like, at least, you know, when someone had a real good receiver, at least my guy is right there, and that guy's going to have to climb over and make a really good throw and catch to get to him. That's where I thought man to man, why we went to it uh, in, in, in some cases. So, like, if, you know, they were, they were just kind of getting us short, you know, doing little, little quick things like we would do, um, we would pop up, hand in the hip, and have them run with them. So then your margin for error, uh, it makes the margin tougher for the quarterback to do. They're going to end up trying to throw fade balls, you know, streaks, and you guys all know those are hard to complete. Um, but once again, all about angles, all about pursuit, you know, and, and here's the other thing. It's like our guys, uh, I would, you know, they're up. Okay, if he's, if he's off, of, you know, it's about seven yards. Uh, we'd say about seven and two. Seven and two is kind of seven yards back, two yards out. So they're looking, and they're all in ready position. All the time. These guys right here, they're ready. You know, they're, they're ready to go. You don't want to you know, walk around. Where you, you know, and, and so, and you're constantly going, hey, you know, um, getting them to line up right. All the time. Getting them to line up right is, is uh, probably 90% of them. And then after that is getting all these guys to buy in that we all have to pull the flag. That's another thing. Whenever we would scrimmage or do drills, um, we'd have to pull both flags. So if one got pulled, another guy'd have to get the other, get the other one. Okay? So we were always trying to pull, sorry. We were always trying to pull both flags. Because remember I told you, when the games that we lost were because we couldn't pull flags. They were great long runs that we should have had. Um, people are gonna do two safeties or they will, uh, you know what people started to do um, with our fly sweep? They would do this. And it was a good, you know, it, it was a good change up for us. Uh, they would do their fly, we do the fly sweep, so they're worried about the perimeter. They put the corners right there, right there. They put the rusher here. They put another guy on top. So there's five, and then they'd have someone like right there. So when we try to go our fly, you got guys sitting right there, okay? So we started, okay, you want to do that? And we started doing like, 
I'd scoot this guy up and we'd go dive right, dive left. And we'd spread these guys really wide. And so essentially he was one-on-one -on -one with the rusher. And then the rusher's thing, I got a rush, and then the guy's got the ball. And then that means he's just got to juke one guy. So, you know, it's, it's whoever has the chalkboard or the, white, the whiteboard last. You know what I mean? What about identifying the best player, manning up and rushing everybody else? Um, yeah, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Uh, but at this we, level? At this level? Yeah, we, we would always rush, uh, you know, sometimes. I think two was probably the max, but I've seen guys bring it. Um, it's just, you know, can the guy get it off to somebody else? I guess you can. Know if you can identify the, the, the best player that's, you know, I'm sure yeah. right away at the beginning of the game, but you can identify it. Yeah, you, you can double them here and then bring, bring, bring this stuff. stuff. You could double, you know, some, if, if, I was, if I was going to do something like that, I would double him and know that these guys have to be back. Mm -hmm. I'd leave him off and I'd go like, you know, something like that. So that way, at least this guy is keeping them in front. And then you really essentially still have a two-on-two -two over here. Um, but my, I guess my point to showing you, you know, people are going to do things to change up. You guys got to change defensively. They're hurting us here. Let's do something else. Okay? Um, if they're hit, hurting your perimeter game, get somebody up. If they're hurting you going vertical, you better get guys back. Right? Um, but more than anything, get them to all line up. Get them to run and pull back. I think that's what I do. Chase? Real quick, I'll coach. Chase, you, you've coached uh, FNL how many seasons? Two years. Two years, and Chase's teams haven't been super successful, right? No. What are some words of advice you would give them? Um, what have you made mistakes with that you probably spent too much time with, with, you know, offensively or defensively? Well, my kids just seemed disorganized, so that was the biggest thing. Okay. So. Organization. Yeah. Get, yeah, I, I think that's key. You know, and, and um, I will say uh, the teams, when I haven't coached these guys, really good dads, I, I don't know if they've been super organized either, uh, but they're having a great experience, you know. Um, so what does that mean by organization? I think that means that your, your practice is not, uh, you know, losing losing. Okay, I think that means when it comes game time, that you're not, the coach is not in the huddle putting every person at the spot, okay? Because that means they don't know where to go. And that makes you, and that happens every week. I see those coaches moving, you know, and, and I'm thinking, well, what do you guys do? How come they don't know where to line up? Now, they're little, they're, they're, they're little and, and their attention spans are, you know, not very long, but the organization, um, and and I think it's simple. What else, Chase? Um, yeah, I think I overdid some of the plays, all the different routes that they did. I think I think I made went too much on the route combinations. Yeah. So I'd say just simplify it because what you think simple for them is too much. So literally just. Keep and it. then, and then I think you can build. So I started simple. And then each week, okay guys, we got we got another thing, we got something more. You know, we got double reverse pass, we got uh, flanker drive, what we you know, what, what whatever uh, you have concocted up. Um, have two, uh, have your one point things you like to do, and then your two point plays. You don't want to just make up on the fly a two point play because you know the, if you go for one, it's from the five, and you go for two, it's from the ten, it changes, and so. You want to have some things that um, maybe you go to. It's just like I call our offense, and I have my red zone package, and I definitely have a third down package. So I know exactly what I'm going to run against, you know, in these situations. Um, yes, sir. When you teach tack or tackling or rem flanks, is it with one hand? Two hands, hand? always two hands. Hand. Okay. Say it all the time. Two hands. You have to get them two. And we, what's that? Oh, that's and don't need your feet. I, uh, you know, I hate when guys are, 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 you know, they leave their feet, they're underneath, you know. It's one thing if you're diving to make a saving, but stay up, move your feet. I'm always saying that, why are you down? Stay up, stay up, stay on your feet. Um, and then two hands for sure. Yes. I mean, the reverses obviously work. Can you do flea flickers? Is that legal? 
Um, so what, what, like how do you define the flea flicker? Like running back and running back goes right to the line, he turns around. Throws it to the quarterback? Lateral side. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. What about hook and ladder? Yeah, yeah. yeah. hook and ladder. I've seen teams do that. Uh -huh. um, the, the team that these guys, Duke, they had a nice like Statue of Liberty play that I thought worked pretty good. Uh, it got us a couple times. Do you remember that? <laughs> well, maybe it's another another game. I've saw I've seen their their thing work. Maybe we scouted it. Uh, yeah, here's their thing. I'm I'm always surprised. Uh, literally, it was where uh, Marcus had a game, and the team he was playing the next week, their coach had a bye, and he was there watching their game. And scouting. Uh, so um, some guys are gonna take it a little more serious, you know. So. For quarterbacks, you recommend like, I mean, yeah. said make sure that we know, like they know what to do, right? So like, yeah. two crap, like just two people be quarterbacks, and then everybody else kind of knows the, all the other positions. Well, I think our guys, pretty much everyone can do it. You just gotta be able to motion and the ball off to, to the person's name. That's why I just want you know, rip fly John. So that way it's coming from the right and John's getting it. How much simpler? Um, his team, I think, only as he got wide, there's only two guys. You and who else? When you're out, who plays quarterback? I'm gonna kick it. Okay, so they got three people who can do it. Uh, just the fact that you know, what if somebody's gone? You got you, you got. I think you got to make sure everybody can do it. So, they, but obviously they can't all throw. So you're gonna have to limit what they do. Mm -hmm. But how about for the rest of the positions? Are you set in that? No, do it all. Do them all. So that that uh, 21. You know, they all should be able to go to any spot. I never said you go here, you know, 21, 21, whoever's six, and they all just go line up somewhere. But then I would dictate, okay, here's I want you to see, I want you, yeah. you know, I want you over because I want to make sure you get the ball. Um, and on defense, I would, I tried to get these guys to be the same guys because I thought they had the hardest job. They had to be disciplined in turning the play in and not letting outside leverage, you know. Um, and then the rushers, you can have anybody rush, find out a couple couple guys that are good at it, and then I would put the guys who weren't as fast closer to the line of scrimmage. That way they're right in the action, and maybe they could make a play there. Right, Chase? Yes, sir. Chase, what grade did you coach last year? I can't remember. Seventh and eighth. Okay, so he had the older kids, so they're gonna be thrown they threw a lot more. How about the season before that? Um, third and four. Third and four. So I think they start throwing a lot, five, six, seven, eight. Three, four, you've still got a lot of run game. And then what I said last night, I don't know if you heard me, is at any of the levels, if your best player, get your best player to be the, the tailback and you can pitch him the ball. And that way he can run the pass. I, I literally, with uh, a kid on his team who's the best player, we'd pitch him the ball and I'd be behind. And we'd have a pass call, but if I saw it was open field, I'd say, run, 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 run. And he just run. <laughs> so that way he knew, oh, I'm not supposed to throw it, I just run. Or I'm behind him. <coughs> Mike, 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 Mike. He finds Mike. Oh, where's Mike? Oh, he throws the mic. So some, you know, sometimes that little kid won't see who's open. Just one coach on the field at a time. Yep. But you can have assistant coach on the sideline. Yep, of course, yeah. Guys do wristbands, guys do signs. Um, I never got that advanced. I just, you know, we were really simple. What do you mean by wrist, wristbands? Wristbands. So kids, all the kids have wristbands. Oh. Okay, so they look, hey, six, six, six. You'll see more of that. Yeah, I was, I was kind of surprised. Okay, what, what do you feel at all? Yep, whatever you want. Video it. We had, that's another thing is um, we've had to tell people they can't video the other team. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> yeah. If we don't get, a, if someone wants to be assistant coach on our team, can we just want to find a friend or a neighbor? Yes. Oh yeah. We do have to sign. Have you? Uh, yeah, you got to email uh, uh, his name. That's it. Yeah. And then uh, there's a little procedure to it, but what it's real simple. What if one of the players does? That's what it usually is. It'll be fine. And then we don't have to do that. Or no, you should always tell where the assistant is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. What else? What time is it? Okay. So I went for about an hour. What else can I tell you? Yes. Who was in here last night? What do we do about getting 
Yeah. We'll go to my bus, okay. uh, and I got all this stuff for you. Okay. Balls. Just, cool. Yep. The whole thing. Yes. If all the team agrees to run two practices in a week, I just said no. Okay, if that's going on. Three practices. Then you can, um, that's right. Um, yeah, I, I, I have less season, so. Yes, I, I don't know why. It was three beginning, then went down to two, and then at the end of season one. Two. That's really weird to me. Um, yeah. Why they would do that? We'll send out reminders to all the coaches. It's supposed to be once a week. If you well, it works, um, because one of the guys won two championships, so yeah. <laughs> this, didn't you ask me that last night? I did. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, I, that's the usually that that's the first I really I've heard of that. I've heard two, and we always discourage that. If you miss if you miss a week, you can maybe make it up and go, you know, two hours the next week or something. But I, you know, what. Well, I think it's ridiculous. I don't think you need to do that. I can easily um, see that happening. I can easily see that happening. Yeah. Um, and but the, the fact is, guys, parents won't sign up for that. Yeah, I was. That's the beauty of FNL. Like, you know That's the beauty of FNL, man. My kids play other sports. We practice once a week for an hour. Dude, we are in and out. <laughs> it's not a huge commitment. And Friday night, go go have fun and play. Okay. Good enough. Okay. Um, what are you coaching, sir? Me? Yep. Uh, go to the most bad names. Well, great. Oh, um, five, six. Five, six. Okay. You guys haven't coached before? Okay. So you'll have fun. Five, six is very competitive. Three, four is very competitive. Those are because they have the most kids. Um, get to know the rules a little bit. Uh, I, I, my first year, I didn't pay attention to the rules. Uh, I was kind of learning as I was going. <laughs> um, you know, and, but literally our practices, guys, for sure, one hour. I never went longer than that. I don't know how much long kids can pay attention. High school kids can pay attention. So you know, attention spans everything. Um, and just be positive, man. Be positive, guys. Like the, the example uh, Coach Pup gave last night about the guy giving it to some of the players throughout the season. It it will pay off later. And then you want to find out what your kids do well, and you know, uh, if they're they're great on defense, you know, let them concentrate on that and uh, uh, praise them for that. Um, but you know, I will say because I'm as competitive as anybody, probably more so. Um, you know, I want to beat my grandma and ping pong. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, I will spike it in her face. I don't care. No. But the point is. I'm gonna get it to the fast guys for sure, but I'm not gonna rub it in uh, and continue to give it to those guys. I'm gonna make sure that every that it is equal, and then be smart about it. Well, you know that you gotta get some guys some carries, some touches. We'll find the right time to do that. Uh, maybe do it early in the game. Um, be smart about how you sub guys. If you're if you're you have really one good player that's outstanding. You want to sit him in the fourth quarter? Probably not. So you got to think about that sub rotation. There's, you know, we always had to deal when we got the two kids. We couldn't have two kids out at the same time. Those are the both, both quarterbacks who could kind of operate the offense. So um, speed, skill. You want to try to do those substitutions accordingly. You guys are like GMs. You know, these are your little chess pawns, so you can you can uh, play with it. Yeah. Is it about for me to keep the time? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, no blocking, but can you run behind other kids or? or is it yeah, we talked about that last night. So if I'm running open field and my receiver's up in front of me, that guy's like, yeah, away or stop. You can't. They'll call that. Okay. And the way I got around it was, you know, I vertical, and I was I would tell him shoulders to run through. Hey, go through his outside shoulder. Go through his inside. So that way, at least I would, in the hope I get the DB to turn his back on the way we were throwing or running. You know, I think about those little, little things that might help. I said last night with like a rusher. You know, we try to do it at angle. If he's a right-handed guy, I'd bring him from this direction, make sure he's on top, so that way this guy's got to run out of here and try to throw this way. Another little, little, little strategy: get him to go that way, and then have your defense really out leverage on that side. So then he's forced on the inside. It's even harder to throw. You know, so. Angles, um, 
the, the rusher, and that's another thing when you're doing group skills, you know, rushing periods, uh, the, the hoop drills, um, things where they take correct angles. Because there's no use in having a rusher who misses every time. I, uh, one of these kids' teams, they had a really good rusher. He missed every time. So I'm like, I told the coach, I said, he misses every time. Have someone else rush. He's fast, but he misses. That's not helping you. So, you know, you want a guy that gets in there and that can make that sack. Because that, that really helps. Um, we did, before every game, really elementary, we would circle it up. And then I put a guy in the middle and I'd say, Eli's in the middle, Marcus, you're out. And uh, he'd go in there in the circle and try to pull his lap. That was always our little, one of our pre-game warm-ups. Um, so all the players are in a circle, you know, blah, blah. And then you have the ball carrier here. And then you call this guy, he comes out, and he tries to pull his flag. If he can't pull it, you have two guys that are going there. And that was just a little warm up to get him flag pulling, get him running around. But explain this, they're running around in a circle? Or just... So, uh, you guys, if you stand up, stand up, guys. Stand up. Here, get over here. So we form a circle and say, what's your name? Scott. Scott. Scott's in the middle. Boom, you're in the middle. Roger, you're in. Go get him. You run in and try to get his flag, and he runs around the circle. Oh, trying to, I got you. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we, you know, Scott's real fast. Can't pull his flag. Mike, you get in there too, and they both of them drop. I, I, I didn't do that during practice. That was a pregame. That was another thing. My, our pregame was maybe ten minutes. I see coaches get there early, doing, going through their their script. No, they don't know their script. They're going through everything. I think. You know, I don't think we need to do that. Did you do that pat and go type thing too? Just war Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're going to find in game night it's packed. So it's like hard to find that. space. Okay. Uh, so whatever space you can find. Um, what is pat and go again? Uh, throwing versus error. So um, this is just at the beginning of practice. You got the QB, and then you got your. Then you got another QB, and then you got these guys here. And so he's throwing a ball, he's throwing a ball, so give it to him, go give it to him, and just And then you'd say, then that's when you can go through your routes to practice. Okay, you know, hitch, hitch, hitch. So then he'd do a hitch, catch it, and sprint to the QB. Hitch, sprint it to this QB, and then pat and go. Okay. Can the runner just Use his arm to keep the defender off. Him. No, they'll call flag, flag guard. That gets called a lot, and you guys, you won't be happy with the calls. I mean, again, he'll be naturally running, right? And he's gonna flag guard naturally, and they're gonna call it. It's real. It's a tough call, you know, because uh, so you just kind of go with it. I would just, I would, I would recommend that you guys just roll with that one. You know, if they throw, if they call it a bunch of times you'll have a complaint that it's going to get called. It's going to seem like it's unfair because of his natural running style. But the fact is, you put your hand in when the guy's trying to get it, he looks like a flight guard. So you have him run with the ball on the outside right now? Does that to avoid that? Or the inside? Um, well, you know, always, I, I want the ball outside to, to where the defender is. Yeah. You know, I didn't hear what you said that you do that like kind of naturally prevent. No, I said naturally you're going to have a flight guard. Because oh. you, you're, you're the way you run. We all run like this. That's what it's going to look like if I'm going to. You know, spinning, I think spinning is good. You know, black football gets tough. I just don't have them do it as their, their only arsenal. You know, teach them a hard cut to get across, but that spin can be deadly. You're going to find some kids on your team that do it really well. And the guys are trying to get it. It's hard. What do you think, guys? You good? If you have uh, questions, don't you know? Um, myself, I think is on our website. Um, I would, you know, I'll try to help you out as much as I can. We got a lot of veteran coaches. You guys will learn really fast, and uh, you'll have a great time. Um, you guys are always welcome at uh, Carl's Bad High's football practices and games. If you're in, the, in our community. We'd love to have you. These guys, after all their games, they always come to our game. We have a big FNL group in our uh, end zone.
messing around. Uh, your kids, um, it's really cool. I, you know, a lot of my friends or guy people I know are principals at the schools. Every Friday, we have tons of kids wearing the FNL jerseys. You know, and you know what's neat too is that uh, I was surprised. My kid, they look at the standings, they look at the loss. You know, they're checking online where they are. You know, um, they they got into it more than I thought. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Yeah.